This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. I'm standing in the South Lake Union area, and 25 years ago, most of the buildings behind me didn't exist. At that time, it was an area of warehouses, small businesses, and some scattered housing. Back then, there was a proposal to redevelop this area into the Seattle Commons, a large urban park surrounded by mixed-income housing and commercial space. The plan looked pretty cool, actually. But then something happened. This guy Jeff started a website where you could buy books on this new thing called the World Wide Web. And it turned out to be a pretty good idea because the company started to grow, and that guy is now the richest person on the planet. Jeff's company, Amazon, set up shop in the South Lake Union area and completely changed its character. Gone were the warehouses and parking lots, and now Amazon owns a couple dozen buildings here, filled with thousands of employees. Over the years, Amazon has expanded its presence in Seattle. It built a smaller campus downtown. Seattle was truly Amazon's home. Bezos chose Seattle as a location for his business because of all the Microsoft tech workers in the area. And now you can say that Seattle is more of an Amazon town than a Microsoft town. But then the company's relationship with the city began to change. First, it held a widely publicized hunt for its second headquarters. Now it's slowly moving jobs out of the city and into the suburbs. The company may be doing so in response to recent moves by the city council to impose taxes on businesses like Amazon to fund programs to reduce homelessness in the city. The conflict has polarized the region, with some residents seeing Amazon as a behemoth needing to be tamed, while others seeing it as a key economic engine. How much should cities like Seattle cater to their major employers? And what responsibility do companies like Amazon have to be good corporate citizens where their offices are? And what's Amazon's next move here in Seattle? We'll answer all those questions after the bike bell. Since we're talking about economic development planning in this video, let's talk numbers. How important is Amazon to Seattle's overall economy? Amazon employs 1.3 million people worldwide, and about 75,000 of those are based in the Seattle area. In this video, it's really important to understand the difference between the city of Seattle, right in the middle here, and the greater Seattle area, which includes Tacoma, Bellevue, Everett, and all of the other suburbs that make up the region. About 725,000 people live in the city, while 4 million live in the entire region. Until recently, nearly all of these employees had offices in the city of Seattle. As of 2018, the company owned or leased 8.1 million square feet in the city. To put that number in perspective, that's more than Seattle's next 40 largest employers combined. I just talked about the difference between the city and the region because you might be thinking to yourself, isn't Boeing located in Seattle? What about Microsoft? Those companies are located in the Seattle area, but not in Seattle itself. And in the United States, regions are incredibly loose confederations of cities. There's no strong regional governments or strong requirements that cities cooperate on issues like economic development. It's essentially every city for itself when it comes to attracting businesses, employees, and residents. Cities want to attract businesses because businesses pay taxes. Those taxes are needed for a city to continue to provide infrastructure and services. And attracting employers can be a zero-sum game. If Seattle lands a business, it means all other cities in the region did not and get zero direct tax benefits. So it seems like Seattle is a pretty good thing going with Amazon, the headquarters of one of the largest companies on the planet located in shiny new office buildings. Amazon's South Lake Union campus completely revitalized the area, which no doubt improved the city's financial situation due to increased property tax revenues from the new buildings. The company chose that part of the city because prior to the campus, the neighborhood consisted of a lot of warehouses and parking lots. They were easy to redevelop, and now that neighborhood is almost unrecognizable when compared to the 1990s. And Amazon seems to have a good thing going with Seattle. Its urban campus is a draw for young, smart employees, centrally located in the metro area with many transit options, and you can't beat the views and outdoor recreation opportunities that go with them. Seattle may be the poster child for the kind of city that attracts creative class workers vital to the success of a tech giant. What happened then? Why am I making a video about their frayed relationship? Seattle, like most coastal metro areas, has experienced significant increases to housing costs. Today, Seattle is the 15th most expensive city to live in in the United States, with housing prices over double the national average. Some believe the influx of high-paying tech jobs is at least partly to blame, and all of those new employees have also contributed to the region's traffic. Finally, some Seattleites are simply awestruck by the speed of change downtown, and change can be scary. In response, the Seattle City Council proposed a payroll tax. The tax was designed to extract funds from the largest companies in the city, those with over $7 million in Seattle payroll and having at least one employee making over $150,000 a year. 
The tax would only apply to about 1% of the city's firms or about 800 total employers, but Amazon absolutely fit the bill. And the tax is designed to be higher on larger firms. You can see in this table how the exact numbers work out, but the tiered rate system basically targeted Amazon on the high end. The money the tax will generate is earmarked for aid for Seattle's homeless and affordable housing programs. Activists in favor of this tax viewed it as Amazon simply paying its fair share, and the city council agreed. They passed the tax last year in July of 2020. This tax was controversial among key stakeholder groups. Businesses like Downtown Seattle Association came out against it, probably unsurprisingly. Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin came out against it, but didn't veto the tax. Supporters believe the funds will help Seattle weather the pandemic and come out stronger. Opponents think it will do more to help nearby cities and even Seattle competes with on the national and international stage. The opponents of the tax weren't guessing about what might happen. Amazon had already begun to move jobs out of the city even before the tax, and the tax probably made Amazon executives feel like they were doing the right thing. You probably heard about Amazon's first big move out of the city. In 2017, the company announced they were accepting proposals for a second headquarters site outside the Seattle area called HQ2. The response was overwhelming. 238 cities and regions submitted bids. The competition was fierce, and cities did all they could to woo the company and its expected tens of thousands of high-paying tech jobs. I have to say that some of the gimmicks the cities used to attract Amazon's attention and secure the bid were straight up embarrassing. The mayor of Kansas City purchased 1,000 products on Amazon and left five-star reviews for each that highlighted Kansas City's attributes. Tucson sent Amazon a cactus. Even more embarrassing than the gestures were the tax breaks and incentives. Cities offered millions in tax breaks. One city offered to de-annex a part of their city so Amazon could found their own company town right next door. These tax breaks highlight what many large companies expect from cities. It's a similar mindset that sports teams expect from local governments. Give us a stadium or tax breaks, or we'll find a city that will. Eventually, the company chose to split HQ2 between Northern Virginia, near Washington, D.C., and Long Island City, a neighborhood in the borough of Queens in New York. Amazon eventually pulled out of Long Island City after local opposition to the proposed tax breaks made it clear to the company that they weren't as welcome as they originally thought. Workers have begun to move into HQ2 as construction continues. The crown jewel of the complex will be a double helix space The Verge accurately described as a glass poop emoji covered in trees. Amazon is doing more than just establishing a second headquarters. It's also moving employees from HQ1 in Seattle to a new urban campus in neighboring Bellevue, Washington, outside the reach of Seattle's payroll tax. Amazon has 75,000 employees in the region, and the company is planning on relocating a total of 25,000 to Bellevue, including its worldwide operations division. Amazon currently owns or leases space in three buildings in downtown Bellevue, with plans for more in the future. Bellevue is an attractive location for Amazon because it can continue to have a presence in the Seattle area, a region full of tech talent. And they can move jobs to Bellevue and their employees don't have to move to a different city or region. And of course, Bellevue is a city grateful for Amazon's presence, while from Amazon's point of view, Seattle is the opposite. So was Seattle's payroll tax a good idea or did it do more harm than good? It remains to be seen as it just passed in 2020. It just kicked in in 2021 and we probably won't see tax receipts until 2022. Maybe the total revenue raised will allow Seattle to meet its affordable housing and pandemic response goals, and the average Seattleite will be better off, regardless of where Amazon jobs go. Critics will point out that Seattle has driven out major employers before. In 2001, Boeing moved its corporate headquarters from Seattle to Chicago. Chicago and the state of Illinois offered the company a total of $60 million in incentives over 20 years. But the change only moved 1,000 jobs out of the area. The company employed over 70,000 people in the Seattle region at the time, so it wasn't the huge blow many thought it was. Boeing is still a major regional employer. The Seattle versus Amazon situation is a great example of the kind of municipal calculus that goes on in cities across the United States and other parts of the world, though generally at a smaller scale. How many incentives should a city give to employers to relocate there, or give to existing employers to stay put or expand? Or should cities do what Seattle did and ask big companies to contribute more? Many studies have shown that tax breaks to corporations to create jobs in a particular location come at an extremely high cost per job. A series of studies of state economic development efforts in the state of Michigan found that some programs had to offer incentives valued at $275,000, $330,000, and $594,000 per job. It's very unlikely the state will ever recoup that investment, and it may just be better off giving that money to people directly. And these tax incentives often don't have guarantees that the jobs will stay in the intended location after the companies get the cash. In 2013, the state of Washington gave Boeing $8.7 billion dollars in tax breaks to ensure the company would build a new line of airplanes in the state. 
It might have been the largest state incentive, and I mean any state in the country, to a private corporation in history at that time. Since then, Boeing has laid off many employees in the state and moved out thousands of others. Cities giving companies like Amazon tax incentives is typically a bad investment. Seattle specifically taxing its largest employers isn't so clear-cut just yet. It's rare for a city to pull a power move like that, and we'll have to wait and see what kind of revenues the tax brings in and how Seattle spends it. I personally think it would be great for cities to stand up to corporations instead of always giving them tax breaks. But companies can and do move, and cities will likely continue to offer those tax breaks. So I guess what I'm saying is watch out for Amazon HQ3 in 2025. Hey, so I'm gonna finish this video up in downtown Bellevue, Washington. I have a whole aside, a tangent that I went off on about the urban design of Bellevue that didn't make sense in this Amazon versus Seattle video and really isn't long enough for a video of its own. So it's now Nebula Plus content for this video. So if you wanna check it out, go sign up for Nebula. That's, that's where I post all kinds of bonus content and other creators do as well. Nebula is great and it's made even better thanks to our partnership with CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is the source for high quality, engaging documentaries. If you'd love to hear more about Jeff Bezos and Amazon, CuriosityStream has you covered. There's an episode of the David Rubinstein Show where he interviews Bezos and you can hear more about his philosophy and perspective on Amazon. He even discusses Seattle a little in the interview. You live in uh, Washington state near in Seattle yeah. or outside of Seattle. Now the man who was the richest man for about 20 years is named Bill Gates. Yeah. And um, what is the likelihood that the two richest men in the world live not only in the same country, not only in the same state, not only in the same city, but in the same neighborhood? I mean, is there something in that neighborhood that we should know about? And are there any, are there any more houses for sale there? That's right. We have a deal where if you sign up for CuriosityStream using the link below, you'll get Nebula for free. That's not a free trial, but it's free as long as you're a CuriosityStream member. And they're running a special deal where you can get an entire year for just 26% off. That's less than $15 for a year of CuriosityStream and Nebula. By signing up for Nebula, you're supporting this channel as well as the dozens of other great creators working to make Nebula a success. It's also a really, really good deal too. So go sign up using the link in the description and get 26% off. Thanks.